right, guys, well, we're going to get uh, stuck into the next little section of mechanics, which is work and energy. Quite interesting concepts to define. Let's have a look at work. Work could be considered to be energy in action. It's kind of what you're doing right now. Putting in some energy, putting in some action, and we trust it's going to make a big difference in your metric exams in a few weeks' time. So, what is work, though, when it comes to physics definitions? It's beautifully put by the formula that we get on our formula sheet. W equals F delta x cos theta. What are we talking about there? Let's put it into an actual definition. So these are the words that you'd write if you're asked to define work. The work done on an object is the product of the force acting on the object and the displacement through which the force acts. So those are the two ingredients, the force acting and the displacement. We've got to have both of them. If one of them is zero, the whole thing is zero and no work is done. So to help us get our heads around what exactly I'm talking about here, I've got a very good friend of mine, Fricky, to come and join us on set. Come on, Fricky, come on in. And uh, I'd like to show exactly how this concept could work. So welcome, Fricky. It's very nice to have you here. You can say hello to everyone. Okay, thank, thanks, Fricky. So, okay, so let's just say I'm going to be exerting a force on Fricky, my friend Fricky. So here's my F. I'm going to exert a force, a force, on Fricky, <clears throat> okay, it's just a, but I'm not actually having any impact here, it seems, um, the delta x is not going, so I'm exerting a force, I could stand there all day pushing and pushing and pushing, but if Fricky doesn't go anywhere, I'm not doing any work, neither are you really, I suppose, Fricky, but anyway, here we are, so let me just uh, try this again, if I'm exerting a force on Fricky, and suddenly I find the power, thanks Fricky, that was awesome, thank you, to move him through a delta x, then I have done some work. I mean, you haven't done any work, but, uh, but I've done work. But it's been lovely having you on set. Let's uh, give Fricky a hand. round of applause. Thank you so much, Fricky. Good mate. Thank you so much. We'll see you later, mate. Okay, good. So that is basically, in a simple and rather rough and ready kind of way, a way of showing how work works. Okay, a force moving through a distance. You need both components. One other thing to look at, just before we look at a few examples, is this whole thing of theta. What is that theta about? So it's not this kind of theta. So don't get confused with that, all right? The theta that we're looking at here is the angle between the f and the x. So for example, if we had a uh, car on a slope or an object on a slope like this, and it's being driven up the slope, can you see that th those are actually pointing in the same direction? The angle between those two is in fact zero. All right, so it's the angle between f and x, not the angle of the slope. Let's have a look at a few examples to see how this concept of work works. So we've got a more simple example with a flat uh, surface and an object being pushed along. Let's say f is 10 newtons and our object moves through five meters. Now those you can see are exactly in the same direction. Theta is zero. What is cos theta? Well, if you think of a cos curve, it starts there, comes down, goes under, comes back up again. We're right at the beginning here. So cos of zero degrees is one. So when we sub that into our equation, W equals F, our F is 10 newtons, delta X, our delta X is five, and our cos theta is one. Multiply those all together, 10 times 5 times 1 is 50 joules. Super simple. Ne? Okay, that's the starting place. Next one, let's have a look at what happens now when f and x are at a bit of an angle. So let's say we've still got um, 10 newtons acting, f is still 10, and x is still 5 meters. But f is now acting at an angle of, let's say, 30 degrees. So our, our theta is 30 degrees. Cos of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. That's 0, 0,866, if you're interested. Then we sub it in. W equals f, which is 10, times 5, times 0, 0,866. That's going to give us 43,3 joules. So slightly less work than if it was acting horizontally. So that's how you'd apply it in an angle scenario. Next one. Now things are getting a little weird here because this force could be something like the normal. It wouldn't be an applied force if it's acting straight up, 
But a normal force, let's say our object is actually still moving through our five meters. Now maybe it's a bicycle freewheeling along the road and we're looking at how much work the normal does. Well, the normal is now at a right angle. Can you see that? So theta is 90 degrees. We've now reached this point here of our cos curve, that point there. So cos of theta is zero. Now that makes a big difference because obviously when you sub zero into this, doesn't matter what everything else is, if you've got a zero, well our work is zero joules. That means that our normal is in fact a very lazy force, never does any work at all. Okay, so that's the first important thing to realize. The second, and this is kind of the big concept that I want you to take away, make sure that you understand this clearly. clearly. What happens if F happens to be acting in the opposite direction to the motion? So we're still moving to the right, covering our five meters, delta X is five meters, but our F is acting in the opposite direction. So perhaps something like friction, okay? What's the angle between them? Well, this is now a full 180 degrees. We're now right at the bottom of our cos curve. So cos of theta is minus one. All right, so that means subbing it in, we've still got our five, I'm gonna to to just bring it down a little bit lower here. We've still got our 10 and our five, but we're gonna sub in minus one for cos theta, which makes the whole expression negative, minus 50 joules. Very important here. This is negative work. Let's get rid of some of the other mess I've created. So, oh, too late, can't get rid of that. The concept of negative work. What is negative work? So negative work is work done against the system. Work done against the system. So say we got our car going along and then the brakes come on. The brakes are doing negative work. They're removing kinetic energy from the car and bringing it to rest. So have a look at this little example here. Here comes the car. There we go, whoa, there we go. All right, so the car was slowed down by the brakes. The brakes are doing negative work, taking energy out of the system. Hope that's helpful. Enjoy a couple of examples. Catch you later. Bye.